you are not blessed based on the word of God that you hear or the word of God that you understand. You are based, blessed and your life is changed in accordance with the word of God that you apply, obey, and act on. That's why you can hear 13 years of teaching and still be mean as the serpent in the Garden of Eden. That's what, no, that's why you can hear a lot of teaching about love, but if you don't make the decision to forgive, the teaching about love will be snatched up by the birds of the air and will not take root in your heart. So verse 4 becomes really important if we really want to change, if we really want to get beneath the surface and you know, not just have a skin-deep spirituality and a skin-deep relationship with God where we can fake it for a little while and we create stages to impress people and we have armor that we put on to go out into our job, but we come home and feel like miserable, miserable people to live with, or we, we feel like we don't know how to be intimate, but we know how to be impressive. And so as long as people only see us from a distance, they don't really notice we're starting to cover our skin and cover our souls and things that are just leaping out of us at all the wrong time. Verse 4 says that Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. And this took courage and it took humility for Naaman to go to his master and show his butt, to show his vulnerability when he was a man with so many victories. I just want to stay there for a minute. Because sometimes I feel like we use prayer as an opportunity to read God our resume. You know. And while I think it's great to celebrate all the Goliaths that we killed, sometimes the giants in us are kicking our butt and we don't say anything about it <laughs> until it's too late. And I'm getting bolder every year I pastor as I commit more and more to preaching to the part of you that you would just as soon hide and never mention, because I think that's where real help is found. And Naaman went to his master and, and told him what the girl from Israel had said. I mean, this is, this is a servant girl, and Naaman is what? A great man. A great man. He's a great man, but he's got these spots that are starting to spread, and if he doesn't do something soon, there's no telling what might happen next. And since there are no essential oils for this particular form of leprosy at this point in antiquity, Naaman has to take the advice of a little girl, and now we have a great man going to an enemy nation in Israel because of the advice of a little girl. Are you willing to obey God even if he speaks through something that seems smaller than you? Because I notice a lot of us won't. A lot of teenagers will listen to me preach and roll their eyes at their parents, and I don't understand that. Because I'm not paying for your college or your braces. I'm not even buying you ramen noodles. And sometimes I've noticed that men will listen to me preach, but their wife knows them better than I do and could say some things that would actually help them. It's getting quiet, and even the women left me out on that one. It's like that. I'm going to cancel reflect if y'all don't help me with this sermon. It's something about exposure. And when a spot in your life, everybody say spot, a leprous spot, something that is consuming you that others can't see, when it is exposed by an experience, that's the second stage I wanted to mention is experience because things will happen in your life and you'll come up upon situations that will expose something that you would prefer to hide, and what you do next determines whether you get healed. So Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. Verse 5 says that the king said, By all means, go. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold. That's like seventy-five pounds of each. So Naaman is going to Israel with his resources to attain healing. He's going he's gonna to deal with this like he always deals with things because he's a great man. He's a persistent man. He's a prepared man. He's a powerful man. He's other things that start with the letter P as well. 
And the letter that he took to the king of Israel read, with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. There's all kinds of stuff wrong with that sentence. It's like the telephone game we used to play when you pass a message along to somebody and it starts out, we're having chicken for lunch and it ends with, I'm dying of cancer, and you pass it down and it only takes three people. This chain of communication has uh, polluted the message itself because, number one, the servant girl didn't say the king can heal him. It said the, the prophet can. And sometimes we run to the wrong people because we have our own ideas about where our help comes from. Talk to me. And it's not the king that is going to have the faith to get him healed. It's the prophet. His name is Elisha. But the king sends the commander to the king because, you know, this is, this is to me the most logical way to get him healed. We'll go straight to the top. But watch the king's response. And this is kind of interesting because when the king gets a letter and Naaman shows up uh, with all of the accumulated wealth that he believes it's going to take to get him healed, you know how we have our own ideas about what it's going to take to make a change in our life. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go back. I'm going to get my degree. I'm going to go back. I'm going to get my degree. And I'm going I'm to eat, eat so much kale. It's going to be coming out of my nose. I'm not eating gluten again until 2024. I'm going to do hot yoga and cold yoga and power lifting. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it all. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to delete every this social media off my phone. I'm never going on Facebook again. I'm going to get my face in the book. And he shows up with all the stuff that he thinks he's going to need to get healed. But as soon, verse 7, as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? You want me to do what? I got this friend, y'all. His name is Alex Early. He was my college roommate. And he used to make prank phone calls in college, and they were hilarious. Most of them were clean. We were Christians. But he had the ability to push people to their breaking point. He was a big fan of a guy at the time who did prank calls named Roy D. Mercer. And this guy was famous for taking people right to the edge. And so we would laugh. And we still have these phone calls recorded. And one day I'm going to release them on SoundCloud. And these phone calls to me just bring me joy at times in my life because everybody's reaction was the same. He'd make up a million scenarios, you know. Uh, he, he would uh, use this uh, name, this alias, Duane McGraw, D U W A I N E, and put a thing over the E because it's French. My name is Duane McGraw. And he'd say, my boy Bobby is throwing up all over the shag carpet because I came to your grocery store and I bought bad milk. And they would always say this, no matter what scenario he made up. One time it would be Bobby's throwing up on the shag carpet. One time it would be I took my trousers to your laundromat and they shrunk up and now they're coming up around my thighs and I look like a European. And I, you know. But whatever scenario he would bring up, their response was generally the same. What do you want me to do about it? <laughs> what? The, the king, the king is like, you brought me a leper. Do you think I'm God? I'm not a doctor. I'm a king. Have, have you ever felt like life brought you something that was above your pay grade to handle? God, they're doing that thing again where they sit there and look at me like they always have it together and they have all the answers. Because I looked at my kids the other day and said, I am not Google. I am not a search engine. I do not know. Furthermore, I do not care. Get out of my face. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and replay things that I've said to my kids and feel so bad that I have to get up and baptize myself in the bathtub and get saved again just as I am without one plea. Oh, Lamb of God, what do you want from me? I'm only a man. And the king says, I know what this is. This man, watch, can I kill and bring back to life? He, he's triggered because he is confronted with a situation that he is unable to transform. And whenever life presents you with something that you were not equipped for, so you got to be a dad and you didn't have a dad. You got to pay a bill, but God didn't give you a job. You've got to step into something that you've never seen before with the faith to believe that it's already done. And it can be exasperating to the point, watch this, that you allow your past experience 
to contaminate your perspective of the present moment. Re remember what I said. The, the, the king of Aram, Benadad II, would often go and invade Jehoram's land. Jehoram's king of Israel. And so when he gets the letter saying, Hey, can you help my guy Naaman? Can you heal my guy Naaman? It triggered within him a traumatic memory of the last time he was attacked. And so he goes off, not because of the situation that he's experiencing, but because of past experiences. Do you ever wonder why you go off and it's, it's inexplicable? Like the level of the offense does not match the level of the outrage, and you wonder why? What was that all about? Have you ever, with the Elevation Church sticker on your car, said some words that weren't, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and wondered? <laughs> you know how y'all think Holly is so sweet? <laughs> One time in college, she was singing a worship song in her Ford Contour, and the song said, I was there, I was in the passenger seat. The song said, You are so patient with me, Lord. She didn't get to Lord before she was screaming. At the, at the Dodge Ram that pulled out in front of her. And she's loud. Holly is loud. When she's up here at Reflect, she'll be smiling. But I'm going to tell you something about Holly Furtick. What? What was that all about? Where did that voice come from? Where you? And then the devil starts telling you, oh, well, you know, you're not a real Christian, you're a hypocrite. Some of y'all are going to lose it before the day is over because of your fantasy football lineup. <laughs> no, not because of anything significant to anything having to do with real life in any way. Because of other men that have absolutely no effect on you other than $100 at the end of the season. And you'll wonder, why did I go off like that? It's understandable because we live in not only the age of anxiety, but have you noticed we live in the age of outrage too? How trendy it is now to just get mad about anything that you don't like the first time you hear it. Well, y'all aren't going to like this part of the sermon, I don't think too much. But can I be honest with you? I don't really care what shoes you wore to church today. No. Maybe my perspective is different, but I spend, I spend too much time seeing people's butts to care about what you have on your feet today. So I don't have time when teen suicide is at an all-time high to check and see if you're wearing Adidas or Nike, if you got Yeezys or you want to just do it. I don't really have time to debate with you about a swoosh or a commercial or get mad about… I really don't have time for it up here when people's lives are on the line. I really don't have time for it in here when people are on antidepressants at a rate that's making them more depressed, but they don't know where else to turn, and we'll run into all kinds of places that are leaving us empty, but we want to fight. There will be at least one comment on this YouTube video about the holes in my jeans. Are you for real right now? But it triggers something. You're not fighting me over shoes. You're not fighting me over jeans. One woman told me, until you shave your beard, I can't watch you anymore. This is psychotic. She said, I'm praying for you. I, I want to say, I'm praying for you. I'm going to fast 40 days. If you're that messed up, I don't know why I went off. It, I think, like for me, this is just what I'm working through. And so, if this makes you think I'm crazy, you're right. But I'm going through this season of my life where I don't want to keep blaming my environment. 
or consulting things that happened in my life because the cross of Jesus Christ gives me a new reality. And it really changes everything in the sense that all of my life has to be viewed through that lens of what he did for me and who he says I am. If I'm not careful, I'll, I'll be like the king who, when confronted with an impossible situation that reminded him of a past hurt, he inflicted the opportunity of his present moment with the pain of his past. Do you see what I'm saying? He projected. See, every time he dealt with Aram, it was an attack, and now it's an opportunity for this man to be healed and see what God can do. But if what you went through isn't healed by what Christ did for you, you will treat the opportunity like an attack. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream, and share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.